We are in October. It's so hard to believe, but that means we have wrapped up nine months of the year. And so I thought it would be a good time to give you a third quarter 2021 London property market update. And we're going to dive in. Hi everyone, Ugo Rinse with Onyx Property Team and Keller Williams. Thanks so much for checking out my YouTube channel. If you are a first time subscriber or showing up on the show, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I put out weekly videos about the London property market and living in this incredible city. I always try to give a balance of lifestyle, but it's also always important to come back to making sure that I can help you understand what's happening in the London property market. As we all know, buying a property is a big investment. So you are not just buying it from a financial perspective, but you're also buying it from a lifestyle and what that property might potentially do. So these market updates are really important to hopefully give you the information you need to just get a sense of things. Obviously, there's a lot I don't cover in these videos. So if you ever have questions specifically about the London property market or the rental side or what's happening, please make sure to reach out and I can help you get a better sense of things. So by way of update, the average price for a property in London in July 2021 was 494,673, according to the latest index by the Office for National Statistics. That was a 2% decline from 504,000 average in June of 2021, which was the final month for home buyers in England and Northern Ireland to take advantage of the stamp duty holiday that had been in place and then has subsequently tapered down and now has completely fully ended as of September 30th. That £494,000 average price is a 2.2% increase from July of 2020. So while we've picked up uh, in terms of year on year, in terms of the month, we're starting to trend back down a little bit in terms of that appreciation growth. And you can see that in this graph here, which shows a breakdown of the different property types um, from detached, semi-detached, terrace, uh, and a flat. And you can see that 494,000 average across all of those different property types compared to where we were last year. According to the Office of National Statistics, London's average house prices remains the most expensive of any region in the UK. However, the capital also continues to be the region with the slowest, lowest annual growth. That annual change in prices in the three months through September was just 4.2% in the capital, less than a third of the growth seen in Northern Ireland and Wales, according to Nationwide Building Society. The UK average across all the regions was 10.3%. However, this really might not be a surprise to many people who follow the property market as it continues the trend that we've seen, especially through the pandemic with buyers seeking more space and recognizing that they need to be able to, that they're able to work from home more often. Therefore, they don't need to be as, you know, close into the city as possible. This next graph shows that that 4.2% annual increase change for London is a decline from 7.3% change from the second quarter. Now let's dig into the high end of the property market, talking about properties north of two million pounds. This market has been hardest hit since we had a significant changes to stamp duty, which dramatically increased the cost of buying a high value property. This, then we had Brexit, which added to the sense of caution among wealthy buyers, many of whom were overseas buyers, as they felt unsure as to their status and ease of access into the country. All of this led to prices of prime central London to fall by nearly 20% between 2014 and 2018. This graph shows the trajectory of high value transactions since 2005. You can see the deep growth from 2005 to about 2008 with the global financial crisis that plummeted housing values. But also we see the steady rebound until 2014 with the introduction of those higher bands of stamp duty and then compounded with Brexit uncertainty. Then we had the bounce back with the last general election in December 2019, which confirmed Brexit, uh, but only to be met with the COVID situation starting in about March 2020, and then those series of national lockdowns that then followed. So the London property market, especially at the high end, is long overdue for a steady rebound. So what does that mean looking forward? 
Looking forward, London is set to underperform the rest of the country until about 2024, according to the Property Industry Eye. They forecast prices in the capital to end 2021 up 1.5% and then to rise by 1% in 2022 and 1.5% in 2023 before accelerating to 3% in 2024. That's just one source's predictions or forecasts. Across uh, quite a few other um, forecasters, we're definitely seeing trends or projections that through 2025, the London property market will increase significantly. And But what ultimately for buyers, what this means is you'll see more competition for good properties than you've seen in the past five years. For sellers, it'll be encouraging to know that this, if your home is priced right, you should be able to see strong demand and possibly multiple offers. I hope you found this video useful. We'll definitely keep updating you on the London property market. And don't forget, if you do have specific questions, please reach out. My contact details will be in the show notes. And don't forget to hit that like button and make sure to share it if you're thinking about buying in the London property market or know someone else who might be as well. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out the other videos on my YouTube channel where I share great things about the London property market and living in this incredible city. So that's Ugo Renze with Onyx Property Team and Keller Williams. Bye for now.